Hello, my name is Shahriar Shahriari, and this is a short math lecture on the sum of geometric sequences and series. So I'll start with a uh, with a little little story and a little problem um, about chess. Chess was um, originally um, invented in India um, about um, in in the, in, the, in the seventh century of the Common Era, and then almost immediately moved to the Sassanid Persia, uh, where it was called Shatranj, and then it was. Um, further developed with, with some of the rules changing um, during the Islamic aid period. Um, and the story I'm about to tell you is uh, the first written version of it comes from us from Ar in Arabic uh, from the 13th century. The story goes that the, the person who invented chess presented it to a, the, the prince in India and, and, and the prince was so excited with this game um, that asked for that, that, that's the, uh, the guy, whatever prize you want, name it. And, and the inventor said that, well, all I want is just give me one grain of wheat on the first square. And then after that, double the number of grains in each subsequent square. So in the second square, give me twice as much as the first square. In the third square, give me twice as much as that. And then twice as much of that, all the way till the end. This um, the chessboard is eight by eight. So there's 64 squares. So that's what they asked for. The prince was uh, very annoyed saying that I asked you, you can ask for anything and this is all you ask. And, and was actually quite annoyed with the guy. Um, so the question is that how much grain, grains of wheat did uh, the inventor of chess ask for? Well, for the first uh, um, square, he wants just one. That's two to the zero. If you're unfamiliar with exponents, watch my videos on exponents. And for in the second one is two times one, which is two. In the next one after that is two times that, which is two squared, and then two cubed, and all the way till two to the 63, because two to the zero is the first one to the first is the second one, two to the sixth degree. So these are uh, the amounts of grain on each square. Uh, now, the point is that two to the 63 is actually a huge number. Um, and, and, the, and the prince was, uh, was actually very surprised when, when, when his people came and told him how much grain this is. In fact, um, the, the chess inventor has asked for the sum of these. So wanted to know, wanted two to the zero plus two to the first plus two squared all the way to 263. This is an example of a geometric, the geometric sequence. The, the original sequence is a geometric sequence. The geometric sequence is a sequence where it starts somewhere and then every term is the same as the one previous, just always multiplied by a common ratio. In this case, two. We're just multiplying by twos. That gives us a, a geometric sequence. And what we want here is the sum of that um, geometric sequence. Um, and so we want to know how to do that. Where there is a nice little trick that always works um, that means that you don't have to memorize any formulas. Because the common ratio was two, what we're going to do is multiply s by two. Multiply by two, two times two to the zero is two to the one, two times two to the one is two squared, two times two to the 63 is two to the 64th. So, so that's what it is. Why did we do that? Well, we're going to do that, did that because we then want to find 2s minus s. Well, that's also not a surprise. We know what that is. That's just s. If you have two pizzas and eat one of them, you're left with one pizza. But we can find this subtraction a different way. We can say 2s is given by this um, 2 to the 1 plus 2 squared all the way to the 64. S is given by this other guy, and we're subtracting. And the point is that when you subtract, a lot of things cancel. So for example, this 2 to the 1 cancels with that 2 to the 1. This 2 squared also cancels with the 2 squared there. And the 2 to the 63 cancels with the thing that's right below before two to the 64, two to the 63. The only things that are left is this two to the 64 and that two to the zero, that one. So we, we, really what we have is that two S minus S, which is S, is two to the 64 minus one. So we found S. The sum of those things is two to the 64 minus one. And that's a huge number. Uh, that's uh, 18 quintillion and counting. Um, and, and in fact, uh, uh, the, the, the prince could not uh, Saturday come up with this much grain. And the story, there's different versions of this. In one, in one the inventor of chess is promoted, um, made a vazir. In, in the other one, he's executed um, um, for, for asking for so much. Now, so we can do the same trick for any uh, geometric sequence. So here's another one, 5, 15, 45, 135. So what am I doing? I start with 5. And I'm multiplying by threes. Three times five is 15. Three times 15 is 45. Three times 45 is 135. And at the end, I have five times three to the 47. 
So I've multiplied 47 threes along. And what I want to know is that this is a geometric sequence. I want to know what is its sum. Sum means adding them. Well, what do I get? And I don't want to just keep adding them. I want to find it in a better way. So S is five plus five times three times five times three squared, because every time, every term, instead of writing 15, I wrote five times three. Instead of 45, I wrote five times three squared and so forth. Um, the, the penultimate term is five times three to the 46. The last one is five times three to the 47. And again, this time we, we do the same trick we did before. You multiply by something and subtract. What do I multiply by? Not 2s, but by, I multiply by five because, uh, no, not five, three, because three is the common ratio. So I find three times s. And what's three times s? Well, what's five times three? Well, it'll become five times three then becomes five times three t squared, the next term, and so forth, um, all the way till five times three to the 48. And then I subtract them. Three S minus S is actually two S. But when I subtract here, again, almost everything cancels except this last term, five times three to the 48, and that's first term five. And I will get five times three to the 48 minus five. But this was two S, so what's S? S is going to be half of that. So I found a formula for what S is. And we can do that in general. In general, if you, the, uh, the initial term is A and the common ratios are, so I'm starting with A and multiplying by R's. So A plus AR plus AR squared all the way till AR to the N. And I wanna know what the sum is. I multiply by R um, and I will get a similar thing, just shift it over. And then I subtract. Now you could do RS minus S as we have been doing, or you can do S minus SR, which is sort of the common thing we, we do for, for a good reason, but, but um, I don't want to get into it right now. If you factor the S, the answer is one minus R times S. But if you subtract um, the, the long forms, then almost everything cancels except for the A from S and A to the RN plus one uh, from the other one. And so if you divide by one minus R, R, you get that S is A times, and I factored an A from the numerator, A times one minus R to the N plus one over one minus r, and that's the sum of any um, geometric sequence like that, a finite geometric sequence. And you can memorize this if you like. I never do, I, and sometimes I forget exactly what it is. I will always derive it. It's, uh, it's easy enough to do that. Um, and, and this is true for when r is not one. If r is one, I couldn't divide by one minus r because that would have been zero, and therefore the formula doesn't work. But if r is one, then that means that all the terms are the same, and then adding them is actually pretty easy. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is, now this is in addition, is about geometric series. So what we just found was that um, the sum of this uh, geometric sequence is, is S times a, 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 S equals A times one minus R to the N plus one divided by one minus R. Now the question is that what if N goes to infinity? What if I just keep going? Well, in the chess example, of course, if the ch chess was infinite by infinite, then there would be infinite amount of stuff that you would want. So most of the time, you're actually, if you go forever, you're going to get infinite, but not always. So if actually A is zero, if you started with zero and keep doubling or multiplying by R, you will always get zero. Nothing will happen. And, and so that's regardless of what N and R are. If A is not zero, and if R is greater or equal to one, the common ratio, like in our wheat example, it was two, or if it's less than or equal to minus one, then uh, S has no limit. So uh, each one of these cases is slightly different than the other one, but, um, but, the, but for example, when R is negative, um, uh, the terms uh, keep getting positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative, but they don't approach any particular limit. But if R is between minus one and one, um, then um, when you look at uh, the formula that we got, this part r to the n plus one, that's the partial sum of, of, the, of the series, um, is that r to the n plus one, if r is between minus one and one, and if you raise it to a power, it becomes smaller and smaller. Like you think of it, if you, if you have one half, one third, or minus one tenth, and if you keep raising it to a power, it becomes a smaller and smaller and smaller. And so the limit of that is zero. And so if this thing is zero, then what's left is, a over one minus R. And so the limit of S as N goes to infinity is A over one minus R. So in particular, so if you have the, uh, what we call the series, an infinite series, a geometric series, 
a geometric series, again, you have an initial term and every term you multiply by common ratio, then the answer is A over one minus R. If R, the common ratio is between minus one and one, it's zero if A is zero, that's sort of a trivial case. Otherwise, there's no answer. And uh, we say that it diverges. That's just the word we use to feel um, like we are talking about something fancy. It is just no answer. This is the end of this lecture. If you're interested with more variety, then watch my videos that are much longer and, and some that are full courses.